የወጣው ቆጮ ላራት ሰው ይበቃ ላራት ቀል አይ ወደሱ አቲ ባህሩ ዝም ብለ ስራ ልትራ አቲ ወደሱ ሀበር ኢስ ሸስመንፈስተር ኢትስ ኦፍ ፎር ኢትስ ፎር ፎር So NSAID is a really unusual crop in that you can plant it any time of year, you can harvest it any time of year. It's perennial, so it gets larger and larger each year. And what this combination of traits means is that farmers can use it when they need it. It allows them to buffer seasonal food insecurity. And that gives farmers real flexibility to try and tackle problems like uh, acute food insecurity. So as a species, most of what we use is a very small handful of the diversity of plants on earth. So we get more than half our calories from just three species, rice, wheat, maize. What we're showing here is that NSET is one example of an amazing underutilized crops from Ethiopia that could have much wider potential to help us meet global challenges like food security. NSET's uh, really restricted distribution is something of a, of a kind of mystery, right? So as a species, when crops are really uh, useful and successful, they tend to spread around the world. So if you think of bananas, they started in Southeast Asia thousands of years ago, and now we find them you know, in almost every tropical country on Earth. So why hasn't NSET done the same thing? That's one of the mysteries we're trying to understand. It's a staple, it's, it feeds 20 million people, but it's never expanded out this small area. Now, what we're understanding is that actually there's other places outside of that region quite nearby that have suitability. So there is potential for NTET to expand, not just in Ethiopia, but potentially in other countries as well. So whether we like it or not, all around the world, every country, no matter where you live, is going to have to change where and what it grows. So the bands that different species grow in are going to have to shift with climate change. Now, that may be a challenge that we're able to meet, uh, particularly in places like the UK, but in tropical countries and in some developing countries, that change may be much greater and people may have much fewer means to be able to do those adaptations. And that, some of that is where this kind of work comes in. We want to find those crops that are resilient to climate change. We want to work out where they can grow now and where they're going to be able to grow in the future. And the, the more we can know about that, the more support we can provide, especially to smallholder farmers, in making that adaptation. The next steps, once we've laid out this evidence and we've done this modeling work, is really over to the Ethiopian government and the Ethiopian agricultural organizations to decide how they want to use that information. 
Because at the end of the day, Ethiopia is a center of diversity for all kinds of crops, yams, NSET, coffee, and it's really up to them to decide how to get the most out of that amazing richness of bioresources. Five rapid times. Just watching all five of them shoot.